We know more about the universe in which we live right now than we've ever known in the entire history of humanity. Discoveries are coming at breakneck speed, expanding our knowledge base of existence. And nowhere is this more prominent than in space science. So here are 10 mind-blowing recent space discoveries. Number 10. Intergalactic Supernova SETI Searches SETI searches are hard. From astounding amounts of Earth interference to the fact that radio signals from space are incredibly weak, you are also faced at always taking shots in the dark. When you turn in the telescope to a distant star system, you can only listen for a short time, usually only a few hours. This means that you have every chance to miss a signal, and only a very slim chance as far as timing is concerned to see one. And to boot, you don't know what frequency aliens would be transmitting at. It could be any of billions. As a result, thinking within SETI is moving in a different direction because the one thing we do know is that scientifically minded aliens would know of these problems as well as we do. So if they wanted to make their presence known and say hello to the universe, there might be more efficient ways to do that through finding universal signposts where you could put a signal and expect anyone else with science to see it. One such method are supernovae. If you time your SETI contact signal with a supernova, which presumably all species in your nearby group of galaxies would see with their telescopes, then you might just find a signpost and see success, though it might be millions of years before you know you were successful. This question led researchers in SETI to recently observe the effects of a supernova, known as SN2023IXF in the Pinwheel Galaxy, 21 million light years away, to see if there might be signals of alien origin associated with it. This is actually the closest supernova in a decade, even being extremely distant in another galaxy. But it also happened 21 million years ago very distantly, meaning that any signals sent around the Pinwheel Galaxy at the time are not likely to be visible to us, too weak. But researchers at the University of Washington had a different idea. So we saw the supernova in the Pinwheel Galaxy, but stars further out from it in our local neighborhood haven't yet seen it. This means that if they send out hello signals every time they see a supernova, it might be a good time to turn our radio telescopes to those stars and see if we catch any signals. So the team has been observing stars within about 300 light years of Earth that have just seen the supernova to see if anyone is saying hello. One wonders if someday we will be the ones pulsing out hello signals every time we see a distant supernova, perhaps as one might see a huge distant fireworks display and then decide to set off a firecracker of our own in a galactic wide analog of a 4th of July or similar holiday barbecue. Number 9. Saturn's Rings May Be Young Using data from the Cassini spacecraft, researchers studying the micrometeoroid environment around Saturn were recently able to estimate the age of Saturn's rings. How this was done, the researchers looked at how dark Saturn's icy ring matter is, Given that the material started out as bare ice, the accumulation of dust on the surface of the material would cause it to gradually darken. They were able to work out that the rings can't be more than about 400 million years old. Determining the age of Saturn's rings has been contentious and continues to be. In response to the study, it's been pointed out that if the rings lose dust over time through some other process, the dating could be wrong and they could be far more ancient. This might be the case if the rings were created by the shredding of a small moon early in Saturn's history billions of years ago. That's assuming, however, that they weren't originally formed from the destruction of a captured object. In any case, the formation, origin, and age of Saturn's rings remains unknown. Number 8. Keep the magnets away from the meteorites the study of meteorites is really an exercise in studying the history of the solar system. They can show the earliest, most pristine material from the solar nebula, to highly shocked and altered material showing the violence of impacts in space. They can also tell us much about the history of Mars particularly, in that the only material from the red planet on Earth today is from meteorites blasted off its surface. Meteorite hunters have long relied on magnets in what they do as meteorite material has a tendency to strongly attract magnets. If a magnet sticks to a rock, it's the first step in identifying if it is indeed of meteoritic origin. But there's a problem. By doing that, the magnet can erase the magnetic past of that rock. 
This is particularly important with Martian meteorites. If in a pristine state, they retain a kind of magnetic memory of Mars and how its magnetic field was when the rocks first formed. This is important because Mars no longer has a magnetic field after having collapsed 3.7 billion years ago. Unfortunately, the vast majority of Martian meteorites have been exposed to magnets since their recovery and no longer preserve this information. Only a handful still do, so it's hoped that for future finds of meteorites of Martian origin, the collectors will keep this in mind. Or, if it's a multiple stone fall, only test one and leave the rest pristine. Number 7. Stars from Andromeda The Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are on a collision course. Recent work has shown that the outer fringes of the two galaxies may already be interacting. But there's another possibility here that there may be stars in the Milky Way that originated in Andromeda that could be far closer. The idea goes like this. Stars can get ejected at high speed from their parent galaxy, typically through an interaction with a black hole. They can be tossed out of their parent galaxy at escape velocity only to wander intergalactic space. The Milky Way does this and so does Andromeda. The question is, how many stars in the Milky Way could be from Andromeda originally? The answer is between 12 on the very lowest end and nearly 4,000 on the upper end estimate. If these exist, they should be identifiable with the Gaia dataset as very rapidly moving stars from the direction of Andromeda and might even bear chemical signatures in their spectra, atypical for the Milky Way. Number 6. The Background Gravitational Rumble One interesting use for pulsars that's come available in recent years is to use them to probe gravitational waves, known as pulsar timing arrays. These allow the study of the cosmic background of gravitational waves in a kind of galaxy-wide detector. What they found is that a background of gravitational waves does indeed exist. Using tiny variations in the time the individual pulsar signals took to reach Earth, the findings still need confirmation, but the evidence for the background is at this point growing, especially when a prediction of general relativity was observed within them. The question is, what's causing them? The leading hypothesis is that it's merging supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies across the universe creating it. The problem is, this doesn't exactly match current models, in that these kinds of black hole events would need to be more common than we currently understand. There is, however, another option in that the background may have been created by the Big Bang itself during the period of cosmic inflation, offering a possible probe into that enigmatic event. Yet another is that they originated as defects in the early universe as it changed phases. The data does not yet make it clear which option it is, but it does seem that there is a way forward to collect more data in a collaborative effort and at least learn more about whatever causes this background. Number 5. Ring Wormholes Typically, wormholes are thought of in the classical sense, tunnels through space-time linking two different points in space, or perhaps black holes performing that function. But there is another option for wormholes that's been talked about within science as of late. Known as ring wormholes, these would not be three-dimensional per se, but flat in a sense. As usual, for this type of wormhole to exist, you have two uphill battles. The first is that it requires a string of negative matter, a circle, that could act as a flat wormhole. We don't know that negative matter can exist, it's just not expressly prohibited by physics. We have no idea how to actually make it. The second is the ever-present problem that whenever you do something like this, it ends up being a time machine. A backwards one that could deposit you on the other side, and if you went back through, you could end up before you left, limited by the age of the wormhole being a hard stop on just how far back you could go. A third issue are quantum effects that would obliterate any such wormhole, which are not yet well understood. All three taken together, we'll probably find that these kinds of wormholes are not possible, but fun to think about at any rate. Number 4. Gamma Ray Burst Supernovae Gamma-ray bursts remain one of the most mysterious phenomena in astronomy today. These are the most luminous events in the electromagnetic spectrum since the Big Bang itself, coming as a flash in gamma rays followed by an afterglow in longer wavelengths. There appears to be different classes of gamma-ray bursts, right now some associated with binary star mergers and others exploding stars. 
but until recently, the origins of them have been difficult to pin down. In October of 2022, the brightest gamma ray burst yet observed occurred that seems to confirm a supernova origin. This event, known as GRB 221009A, was known as a long gamma ray burst and seems to have preceded a supernova event by about 10 or 20 days. The indications for this supernova was teased out of the data as an extra brightening of sorts, but remains in question and difficult to confirm. Still, the best model we have points to supernovae as the origin of this kind of signal, but it would be interesting if a burst of this type in a distant galaxy produced no signal at all and sent the whole origin theory for this type of gamma ray burst back to the drawing board. Number 3. Yet another outer solar system planet possibility. In recent years, there has been talk of two possible planets beyond the orbit of Neptune. Setting the debate aside of whether Pluto is a ninth planet, the first of these is the infamous Planet Nine, which has been invoked as a possibility to explain peculiar orbits of some trans-Neptunian objects, which if it exists, is likely to be a protoplanetary core or super-Earth about five times the mass of Earth that was ejected into a far orbit after the formation of the solar system. Evidence continues to mount for the existence of this planet, but as of yet, it has not been directly detected. Lesser known is the possibility of Planet 10. Here there is a strange feature of the Kuiper Belt known as the Cliff, where material abruptly drops off, which may represent either a cutoff of material during the formation of the Kuiper Belt or a large gap. One possibility to explain this would be the existence of a Mars-sized object in the area clearing the local neighborhood. Now, we have the possibility of a Planet 11 much more distant than the aforementioned. This would be a Neptune-sized world deep out in the Oort cloud. Modeling shows that the dynamics of planetary ejection from the inner solar system would place up to 10% of objects originally forming in the inner solar system actually now out in the Oort cloud as opposed to being ejected entirely from the solar system. This would leave such a planet in a highly eccentric orbit that would place it very distant of the Sun for most of its orbit, but dramatically closer during a relatively short period. Interestingly, if this object is Neptune or Uranus sized, it might be discoverable with future telescopes. But if it's smaller than that, it may never be discoverable until we actually go out there, which is far future. But the idea of large planets in the Oort cloud is interesting because percentages can be placed on it, with a Uranus-sized world having about a 7% chance of existing out there. Number 2. The Milky Way's Filaments Recently, strange horizontal filaments have been detected by instruments such as Meerkat, emanating from the environment of Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. There are two types of filaments, longer vertical ones discovered in the 80s that align towards the black hole and are aligned overall with the galaxy's magnetic field in the area, and are probably made of high-energy electrons stretching about 150 light-years out. But the horizontal filaments, which should be random but aren't, are made of gas only and stretch about 5 to 10 light years out. This points to some kind of outburst from the environment of Sagittarius A star around 6 million years ago, and there is some evidence for previous outbursts, but the actual mechanism for creating the two phenomena remains unknown. It might however lead to a better understanding of the black hole's spin and even give clues to the early history of the formation of the galaxy. Number 1. Cosmological Time Dilation Few attributes of the universe are as strange as time dilation, an effect of special and general relativity depending on the circumstance. Fundamentally, this means that time does not tick at the same rate everywhere in the universe, an assumption Newton once made that turned out to be incorrect. Time dilation is well proven. If you put a clock in a gravity well such as Earth, or you put an atomic clock on a fighter jet doing Mach 2, time will tick at a different rate than a control clock not in that environment. Indeed, certain satellites have to be corrected for this, for them to even work, particularly the GPS system. But there's another lesser known aspect to time dilation. Known as cosmological time dilation, the most distant objects in the universe that we can see, light dating from the early days of the universe, has the effect of appearing as though time were slowed down. This means that looking at those distant objects, 
they appear to evolve slower than what we see today. This is a product of the expansion of the universe. As it expands, light must travel increasingly further distances to reach us, thus takes more time to get here. We see this as dilation. But it's an illusion. If you were present near those objects when the light left them, time would appear to tick normally. This effect has been well studied for 30 years in very distant supernovae which unfold much slower than nearby ones. More recently, however, Geraint Lewis and Brendan Brewer have looked at quasars, among the oldest objects in the universe that we can see. They studied 190 quasars, paying attention to the level of redshift they showed, a marker of their distance, showing that the most distant ones, about a billion years after the Big Bang, appear to be running from our perspective five times slower in time. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.